we would like to acknowledge that we are on the unceded ancestral lands of the Kalaitli Tene. We are honored to be guests and visitors here where we live, work, and play. This is what can happen when adults step out of the way and students make decisions and design their own learning. This is student agency. My name is Harsh Dhaliwal and I'm part of the District Student Advisory Council here at SD57 in Prince George, British Columbia. We've all heard stories of racism, whether it's through social media or through the news, but we lack an awareness of its prevalence in our day-to-day -day life. Through this project, we're able to listen to real-life stories from people in our communities and in our schools. And through this project, we really want to invoke deep listening and impact people through the power of story and through the heart. Even today, I think when a person sees me and they see what I look like, there's an assumption about my background. I grew up with parents who spoke Punjabi at home, but I always answered in English. I'm quite cautious as who I let in to my life because I don't want people to not like me for the way I am. My oldest sister, um, when she was younger actually, she learned Japanese as her first language. And because of that, she had some um, troubles learning when she first started going to school. And therefore, my parents had to tell that her that she had to stop speaking Japanese. And therefore, my middle sister and I never got the chance to fully like learn and immerse ourselves in our culture. It was always like the balance of having like a Western identity and having more of like this Indian identity. And it was always trying to balance like, am I Indian enough? Am I white enough? First, I was like this. I thought I solved my problems. I was like, okay, I'm listening to them. I'm taking off my scarf. I'm becoming white. I'm, I'm becoming normal. And then I started skipping school, and I didn't want to be at school. And then my grades started slipping. My daughter said to me one day, um, Mom, I always had this feeling that teachers have low expectation of First Nations kids in the North. I remember in elementary school, I didn't get very good grades at all, and it didn't feel like I had a lot of support um, to help me um, achieve the grades that I had wanted. And I just felt like I was almost expected to get bad grades and that they were just gonna like leave me there, <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, I never learned my language. Uh, I, I'm picking it up now, but I was purposely not taught it. I talked to my mom about it and she's like, I don't want you to have an accent because it's already hard enough for you <laughs> to, to, to how you look. And I don't want that struggle, so. It was easier sometimes to just uh, be like everybody else, right? So be more white, um, whatever that means, um, in order not to stand out too much. I was very aware of the stereotype around black people. So I would try to shift myself to fit into this kind of token black person narrative to make sure that I don't lose opportunities based off of the color of my skin. Almost like I'm, because of my race, I'm expected to be smarter or I'm expected to be a higher achiever. Even like from my friends, sometimes I would get comments like, oh, of course you got an A on that test, you're brown. I was, I, I loved sports, so I was, um, I participated in that. There was the assumption that I was going to be good at everything anyways. Many of them didn't want to be on a team with me or didn't want to um, play with me outside of school because they're like, well, you're going to be better than us anyways, so I don't even want to go there. I'm not like that. So, you know, go find some other people that are like you that you can kind of hang out with. So that was really difficult. I don't think I felt ashamed necessarily, but I think it. It, it's just frustrating at times, you know, to deal with those type of ongoing jokes and those ongoing comments. So not necessarily, I would say, ashamed, but just frustrated to have to deal with those. A lot of, like, in the classes, just a lot of, like, people joking around mostly, or, like, online people making comments on people's posts and stuff. Like, if people are trying to speak out against racism, sometimes I find that it gets kind of made fun of. 
you know, people understand what other people are going through. I think social media has been great for that. It's also been horrible for it, but I think overall, um, you know, knowing what it is, what people are going through, hearing the stories of those, you know, and understanding what they go through on a daily basis, it's just not acceptable and people shouldn't have to go through that. Uh, it's not directed racism uh, towards specific students as much as it is kind of stereotypes about uh, individual students or their and their race, I guess. doesn't really translate at all to how well they're going to do in school. I suppose moving from a small community to a bigger center where we had to go to high school, plus I found a lot of racism when I went to the bigger school just because um, there was them and us. Lots of people say that there's so many homeless um, First Nations people and they don't know why that is. And it's like, because of the residential schools, it's because of all the families that have been infected. Like, and they just blame it on them for drugs, alcohol, and it's not. As someone who isn't a person of color, I don't get judged for the lack of melanin in my skin, but other people do, and it makes no sense. All of the shows I watched had other little white girls in it. Going to the store, I had no issue finding a Barbie doll that looked at me, or just any sort of doll, the American Girl dolls were really popular and I never had one, but so many of them were blonde haired, blue eyed, white girls. I could go to any school, but I just didn't see myself in those roles because I didn't have role models. I can't think of one teacher I had in high school that looked like me. I felt a lot of shame just looking different and I, I wished, you know, I had different hair color or eye color. And, and I think any teenager or any kid, um, you don't want to stand out no matter who you are, right? And so when it's pointed out continually that you're different, um, it's, it becomes a little bit difficult. I wouldn't say that I felt ashamed, but I, I definitely felt different. Like I was raised to like be very proud of who I am, but maybe I need to be careful of, of what I say or what I'm doing because I don't want to stand out for being like who I truly am.